Welcome everybody to another edition of Ask Octopus, uh, where we take your interesting questions we got from the week and we do our best to answer them. Uh, we're changing up the format a little bit. Uh, gonna try this for a couple weeks to see how well it works out. Uh, before you had got to see Derek, Ryan and I all answer questions in the same video. Uh, now we're just gonna split that apart. So I'm just gonna answer a question for this video and then Derek will be answering a question in another video, and then Ryan will be answering another question in another video. Right now, we don't have Ryan joining us today. He's on vacation, on a well-served vacation. Uh, we just have Derek joining us today. Hey, Bob. It was my, it was, it was my turn. It's the, Ryan's turn this week uh, for annual leave. I had some time off last week. Yeah, there you go. Yes, yeah, so hopefully, uh, hopefully I get some time off on a Friday soon, but we shall see how, that, how well that works. Um, and then our, our plan for this going forward will be that we're going to try to release videos like two or three videos a week as opposed to one video at the end of the week. So we're just giving it a try, see how well it works. Um, if we might change it back, go we'll just play it by ear. So I'm going to go ahead and just dive right into my question. So what are some blue green deployment strategies with Octopus Deploy? Uh, Derek, I'm sure you've probably been asked this question a couple of times and it's kind of want to get your thoughts before I dive into the solution. Blue green's fantastic. I've actually, I've, I used Octopus uh, before uh, to uh -huh. do blue green on Azure using um, a particular CMS, a particular .NET CMS. Okay. Um, and it was actually, even before Azure um, was fully supported, I was doing it and it was it even like just dropping into PowerShell, Azure PowerShell with it, it was running. So yeah, it, I've been doing it. Uh, so it's the strategy side of things, it can, Blue green has a few different. I find that sometimes blue green can be a little bit different depending on the the customer. But yeah, it's I get asked that quite a lot. Now, when you're doing that, when you were doing that, did you have were they the same servers? Like you're doing, like you're deploying to just different folders on that same server, and then you just switch like a load balancer someplace else, or were you doing different servers? I was actually um, Azure Web Apps, so I was using the staging slot. Oh, okay. um, yep. So I was pushing that. Because because that uh, that .NET CMS, it's it, the database deployment side of things wasn't great. Um, yeah. We it was only the Azure Web Apps, and so it was anything that was required your code. Yeah, yeah, and so that's kind of that's kind of how I did blue green deployments before, as well as using the Azure Web Apps. Uh, it, when you do that, your process can stay pretty similar. So it's just everything is the exact same, except down here when you get down towards the like these different steps you're going to have some like swap staging slot steps or something along those lines where, but your deployment process is pretty much the same. Uh, but what I found was we have some customers that the approach that are taking it, and it makes sense is they're not using Azure. They have VMs on premise. And so they're doing, they have different servers. So they have a set of blue servers and then they have a set of green servers and then they have a net scaler that makes the determination of where they're going to send that traffic. Are you seeing that as well? Yeah, I've had that. Um, the, the idea, the concept of obviously like a, a separate environment, almost instead of it being like that staging slot, it's you know it's a, yeah. it's it can be an entirely different stack of servers, you know, be it on prem or, or on a cl in cloud as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's where it gets interesting because you because it's different sets of servers. You're going to have to have different, almost like a different environment, like you say. Uh, because, I mean, if you want to deploy just to your blue servers, you need to be able to deploy to your blue servers. You don't want to deploy to both blue and green at the exact same time. Um, so I wanted to kind of walk through a couple of different strategies that I put together. Now, the sticky wicket of, so to speak, of this particular process is going to be the database. It's always going to be that database because you, you, you're going to push out your database and you're going to basically have two versions of the code running almost at any given point. Uh, so... There are a couple of strategies. Um, I talked to one customer and what they're doing is, so let's say they're deploying 2018.4.3 today. What they'll do for their database is they'll deploy 2018.5 uh, or 2019.5 uh, a week ahead of time. So if they're deploying the code today, they're deploying the previous version of the code today, but they're deploying the next version of the database today as well. So it's always kind of a little bit farther ahead. Uh, that takes a, quite a bit of discipline to do something like that. You really have to make sure you, that all your changes are backwards compatible. Um, any data movement of any sort uh, has to be able to handle it. You know, you to, your code has to be able to handle pulling data from both sources. But it's probably the, if I had to think of it, probably the best solution 
basically make all your database changes very backwards compatible and have that ability to support that. And then you would have to have multiple deployments that would come through. So you would have a deployment that would do, uh, let's say I want to move a column, a data from uh, table A to table B. Well, I'd have to add the column in one deployment and then have my code updated to point to that new data, that new column, but also have my code pull data from the old column just in case. And then I do a deployment again where I swap all the code to use all the, just the new column. And then I do another deployment where I come through and I remove that old column from that old table because it very much a phased approach at that particular point in time. I can see where you're coming from there on the discipline side of things. Um, yeah. That must, I'd imagine that could take, you'd have to uh, schedule that out you know, a month in advance, I would imagine. Yeah, that's how I did it at a previous job. Like we, we made that decision. It was very much a, you had it's very disciplined on something like that, and uh, we almost had to have a list of database changes that we would want to, we would need to make that we had to basically uh, delete old columns or old tables or old store procedures or something like that. Yeah, it, it does thing all the discipline, but I really love the idea. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. makes things yeah, it makes things a lot easier. But yeah, I'd imagine it takes a lot of discipline and planning. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's not something you can just do. <laughs> 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 but I mean, if you get to it, when you, once you, once you start doing those strategy, doing those strategies, it makes deployment so much better because you could deploy. So in this case of this customer that I was working with, they could deploy to, um, their, let's say right now, everything's on green, as you can see, well, they could deploy to blue and not swap the net scaler. Then they can go through and run their tests during the day. They can, you know, they feel very confident about their release. And then, you know, later that night at say 7 PM, they run a command. And the net scaler just automatically switches for them. So these are kind of the two different approaches that I took to this. To this. Um, so uh, what I did is I created, in, for the first approach, I created two environments. So I have production green and production blue. And when I want to do a deployment, so I'm going to do a deployment using my traffic op. You'll notice that I have the database and web project separated. And I think for blue-green deployments, you absolutely have to do that. Um, you have to have a way to stage your database changes beforehand or have the ability to do very separate or very isolated database deployments uh, because your code is gonna be coming in and it's gonna be, you, you could have a different states or anything along those lines. Um, but I created a traffic cop because I'm gonna deploy the whole stack all at once. And so I wanna deploy 4.3 to blue. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And I kind of like this approach over my next approach I'm gonna show you, but I, I, I do wanna walk you through both of them just so you can kind of see what it looks like. And I'll kind of walk you through why I'm going to say approved, yep, proceed, approved. And so the reason I, I, I really like this particular approach is you can see exactly what versions are in which, which environment very easily by quickly looking at the dashboard. And you're only going to really, I mean, if you're doing blue-green deployments, you're really only going to have two production environments. You're going to have production green, production blue. Um, now, the way that I handle it for the database, I don't have a green database and I don't have a blue database. I just have the database. And what I did is I have a couple of different variables that I set up. I'm just using library sets. So, oh, traffic cop doesn't have that. Uh, let's go to the library. Uh, variable sets. So I have a global variable set called global.database.environment.abbreviation because that's what I'm building out my database from. And so when I go to dev staging or tests, dev staging test, and, but when I go to production, everything has the exact same name, be it production, production blue, or production green. Everyone has the exact same abbreviation. Now, when I'm doing web style deployments, I might want to separate that out. So I might have prod be tied to just prod and then I have prod blue, prod green, because I'll use this to say my subdomain on my local IAS machine. And that's what's making that. Um, just different, different approaches on something like that. But that's, that's kind of how I made that that distinction. So I have separate variables for my database versus separate var variables for my like IIS settings or something like that. But the nice thing about this is I can quickly look at my dashboard and go, okay, blue has the most recent version or green, well, green has a version behind. So you can, you can see that very quickly. Now the downside of that is that if I wanted to add blue green deployments to staging, then I have to go in and I have to add staging blue, staging green. I also have to come into my life cycles and I have to add, you can see right here, a blue green deployment. I have a production phase, but 
in my production phase, I'm doing production blue, production green. I'd have to do the same thing for staging. I'd have to have staging blue, staging green, and you'd have to worry about those variables. So I like this if you're only going to do blue green deployments in production um, and maybe staging, but just kind of set that up initially so you, you know what you're going to be doing. You should definitely be doing that in staging. You should yeah. definitely be doing that in staging. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to wag my finger at you. Yeah, exactly. I only test my I only test my deployments in production. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so the other approach that you can take is leveraging tenants. And I started doing this and I was like, oh, this isn't terrible, but I had a couple of concerns with it. Um, I like it because it keeps things nice and clean. So I have development, testing, stage, and production. So I keep those four environments the same. Uh, I don't have to worry about different variables per, um, I like, this is my production variable, but it has to be assigned to both production blue and production green or anything along those lines. But in order to see what is in what version, so like right now, all I, don't, I don't know, all I can see is 4.3 has gone to staging and it's been deployed to one of my two tenants. I don't know what version that is. And so I have to dive in a little bit and I can see, okay, green is the one who has the most recent version. But it makes the deployments a little bit easier because I can just come in here and say, I just want to deploy green to production and let's go ahead and do this deployment. Um, I do have an internal one for my testing where I'm not doing blue green style deployments because you don't, since you're not doing blue green style deployments, you're not going to be, oh, I'm going to always deploy to the quote unquote, the blue servers, or I'm not going to always deploy to the, the green servers and testing or staging. Uh, but maybe this works out better when you're doing, if you're doing blue green all the way down to dev and testing, uh, it certainly is an option. I wanted to show you both so you can kind of pick out what works best for you. Um, I have my preference. I like the, the separate environments, even though we've been harping on not having separate environments. I think if this is one of those cases where the exception, there's an exception for that particular role. I can definitely, I can see your point now. I, I prefer, I definitely prefer it as an environment. It's just, yeah. it's the dashboard. Um, it's yeah. just, you know, people, release managers logging in and just, it's just bang, it's there. Um, so I can see that, I can definitely see that that's been a, a, a good strategy, but I definitely prefer it as the, 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 the environments. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I think it's, it, cause we have, a, it's, I think it works out great when, cause it's a very limited number of environments. Like if you were creating an environment per tenant or you had a, like a bunch of different environments, like this is for customer A, customer B, that's where multi-tenancy really shines. Uh, even data centers, if you're doing multi-data centers, I, I would still recommend doing, instead of doing a environment per data center, I would still use multi-tenancy. And the big reason for that is that allows you to scale up and have multiple data centers at that particular point in time. So you can say, all I'm going to be in is uh, U.S. and Australia. And now I'm in, in the future, I'm going to be U.S., Australia, then U.S., Australia, Africa, then U.S., Australia, uh, Asia. You know, you have to worry about a bunch of those different things. And so that's where multi-tenancy allows you to scale that out. In this particular case, you, have a, you know you're only going to have two environments in production. I said pretty much guarantee at that point. A really nice sell. I do I did yeah, it's a nice strategy. And to be honest, I'd never actually thought about um blue green as a as a multi tenant approach. Um, yeah, I wanted to see what that looked like and see uh, see what pain points that would be before trying to recommend that to somebody. Yeah. And it, it, it's strange talking about multi tenancy with flying not being on the webinar uh, on the Ask Octopus. <laughs> <laughs> I missed out on one of them. <laughs> All right, so that was just a brief overview of some blue-green strategies with uh, Octopus Deploy. Uh, if you have any interesting questions you want to send our way, please go ahead and submit it to us at helloactopuscom slash askoctopus or email us, or you can join us on Slack. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Derek, for joining me today, and next week we should hopefully have Ryan back. Thanks, Bob.